Hey everyone, I'm Kelly with The Suburban Soapbox and today we are making a savory and cheesy stromboli. This is my favorite dinner to make at home and it's super simple to throw together. You might wanna make this for Pizza Friday instead. So to get started, you're going to need the following ingredients. So I have my homemade pizza dough, which you can use your favorite store-bought pizza dough or one from even a can in the refrigerated department. Whatever you like to use for pizza will work great for this stromboli recipe. Your assortment of meats and cheese. So I have salami, I have the big sliced pepperoni, a hot capicola, you can get a sweet capicola or like some other type of uh, cured ham or meat. I also have provolone cheese and shredded mozzarella. For flavorings, I like to use a little bit of garlic powder and my favorite pizza seasoning. You can get this pizza seasoning recipe at thesuburbansoapbox.com. It's super delish, easy to throw together, and I keep it in the pantry for everything, basically. Some grated Parmesan cheese. So let's talk about the cheese for a second. This is the grated Parmesan cheese that is shelf stable and it's in a can. I don't like to use the fresh Parmesan cheese because this is going on top of the stromboli, so it's going to bake up crispy and crunchy. You can use fresh Parmesan, but this just has a better flake once it's cooked. A little bit of an egg wash, this helps keep everything on top of your stromboli, so once you roll it up, put it on your baking sheet, you're going to brush it, and then sprinkle it with all your stuff. And then a little bit of flour. This is just to roll out your pizza dough so it doesn't stick to your board. So to start, we're just gonna sprinkle some flour on the board. And then take your pizza dough and put it on the surface. So you might wanna stretch it out a little bit. We're going to roll it into a rectangle. So if you have round dough, it might bite you a little bit. Just do the best you can rolling it out into the rectangle. You wanna press some of the air out of the dough. Give you little air pockets. And we're gonna roll it out as thinly as possible. So if you start working with the outside of your dough and pressing to thin it out and then working from the inside and just stretching and pulling a little bit and then you'll be able to roll it out easier. So I just noticed that my board's sliding a little bit when I'm rolling it, so I just wet a dish towel, and if you put it underneath, it's going to help stop your board from sliding if you're using a board. Now if I can just make the dough stop sliding, that would be good too. Sprinkle a little bit of flour, and just roll it out. Yeah, much better. Sometimes it does take a little while to roll this out. You want it to be as thin as possible. I promise you, your patience will be rewarded. Keep going. You want it to be less than half an inch thick. I like it to get almost to the perimeter of the board. And once you're that size, we're almost there, you can start to load it up. And now we're going to layer all of the meat and cheese on the dough. So quick tip, you just wanna leave a little bit of space around the edge so that it has something to stick to. So when you roll up your dough, you still have some empty space that you can fold under and everything's gonna stick and bake together so that nothing, none of the fillings come out. So there's really no rhyme or reason to how you layer this and you can put as much meat and cheese as you want on here. I just like to do a thin layer of each type of meat and then top it with the cheese. So, you're just going to shingle it, or just layer it, to cover the surface of the dough. This is so great for like a party, or the Super Bowl, or March Madness. It's a great way to feed a crowd. 
Next, we're gonna layer the pepperoni, and I like to use the large sliced pepperoni like this. You can get it in the deli department of your grocery store. It just goes a little more quickly to set it up. The small pepperoni works well too, but when you cut it, sometimes those little pieces just fall out. So this just slices really nicely. Make sure everything is flat, as flat as possible, so when you roll it up, you don't have a lot of gaps. And my favorite is the hot capicola, or hot, cap hot capicola, whatever you call it. I know people comment on the butchering of the pronunciation of capicol or capicola, which is how it's spelled. Open it out. And now the cheese. So we're going to layer on some provolone. And now sprinkle with your shredded mozzarella. Make sure everything is evenly distributed on your stromboli so that when you cut it, everybody gets like an even amount of all the flavors. Make sure you don't have a lot of stuff sticking out over the edges so that it seals up nice and tightly. And then we're just gonna sprinkle on some garlic powder just to add a little bit more flavor. If you don't really care for garlic powder or garlic anyway, you can certainly leave that off. Lastly, we're going to add some pizza seasoning to the inside. We're also gonna add this on the outside. This is just like a cornucopia of Italian flavor. And now we're gonna roll it up. So you just wanna fold this edge here, and we're gonna roll away. And just make sure everything is like tucked in, nice and tight. The great thing about pizza dough is then you can stretch it so it works with however you're working. If you even overloaded it a little bit, it's okay because you can stretch it out. And now you're going to pinch these sides here, tuck everything in, stretch it, and pinch it, and then you're going to tuck those edges under. We're just gonna sprinkle our baking sheet with a little bit of cornmeal, and this just prevents sticking. But what I also like about the cornmeal is it gives it some really interesting texture on the bottom. And then we're gonna transfer our stromboli to the baking sheet. Make sure everything is tightly underneath. Your seam side is down to seal in all of your savory goodness. And we're just gonna brush the top with an egg wash. So this is one egg and about two tablespoons of water just whisked together. And it gives it a beautiful golden brown crust, but it also helps the cheese and the Italian seasoning to stick to the top. And spread the egg wash over the entire exposed surface of your stromboli. Now we're gonna sprinkle the Parmesan cheese on top. And the pizza seasoning. Now we're gonna pop it in the oven for about 18 to 20 minutes. stromboli. So after you take this out of the oven, you want to let it sit. It's got to set up. The cheese has to kind of like come back together. So you want to let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes before you actually cut into it. There we go. That's the inside of your stromboli. See all the awesome cheese is oozing out. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. So I'm just going to cut this into slices. And it's so much easier. If you have an electric knife, like for your Thanksgiving turkey, this is a great opportunity to bust that thing out. There we go. How awesome is that? 
And I like to serve it with my homemade pizza sauce. You can get that recipe on my website or on YouTube. When I was little, my mom used to give me the end and I used to get so angry because it was so doughy. But I understand now she used to give me the end because nothing would slide out. And then I just like to serve it with the pizza sauce on the side for a little bit of dipping. And I'm not a dipper, so I'm just gonna go right in. Mm. So salty and cheesy with so much Italian flavor. This is actually pretty spectacular. Definitely give this one a try. If you like this video, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. For more easy recipes, visit thesuburbansoapbox.com. Thanks again.